I just got an air fryer from our wedding registry, so today I thought I would do a fry and tell Q&A regarding UX portfolios. I'm making crispy tofu. I'm very excited to try this recipe out. This is only the second time I've used my air fryer, so hopefully it works out. I asked you all to ask any types of questions regarding UX portfolios on my Instagram, so let's jump into it. First question regarding portfolios is, what platform would you suggest for a beginner and a bootcamp? There are so many good website builders these days, from Wix to Squarespace. I've even seen UX Folio. I personally use Simplice, which is a WordPress builder. At the time when I first started my UX portfolio, I was looking for a little bit more customization. And so I turned to Simplice as my preferred method. But the only thing is I don't really find it that easy to use. So I would start off with one of those easier website builders first. And then once you are kind of settled into your first UX design job, start branching out to much more complex builders. Before we move on to the next question, I should probably start cooking this. So I already drained my tofu and now I just have to like let it What's the word? I don't know. I'm supposed to let it like dry out basically. Oh my God, I almost said leak, which is so gross. So this is what I do. I take a paper towel and I put it on the bottom of whatever thing I have and I gently take out the tofu. Oh my gosh and just place it on top. And it sits in this little tofu tower. Okay, moving on to the next question, which is what are the most important things we should showcase in a portfolio? So with portfolios, I would say there's a big three must haves. And those are your case studies, your about me, and a contact me. Your case studies are gonna be all the work that you showcase on your portfolio. Your about me section is going to be a description about yourself, your professional background, maybe even why UX, and also maybe some fun tidbits about yourself. And then the contact section is going to include a way for people to contact you, whether that's your email or a contact form. So some optional things that I've seen or like to include is a photo of yourself. Honestly, this might not even be optional. It might be a requirement at this point because people want to know that you're a human on the other end of the screen and we all want to see your beautiful face so give the people what they want and then the second optional thing that I've seen recently are resumes personally I don't add my resume to my portfolio because I'm like way too lazy to update that on a regular basis and I hate updating my resume it is literally like the bane of my existence. And so I don't add it on there, but if you have the time, feel free to include that on your portfolio. So the next question is minimum number of projects for entry level. I assume this question means how many case studies you need in your portfolio. I get this question a lot and my philosophy has always been quality over quantity. You don't wanna put a case study on your portfolio that you don't feel proud of because you're going to have to confidently speak to it one day when you have your job. In interviews and you also don't want to put anything in that doesn't truly showcase your design process. It would just be a waste of space on your portfolio. Oh, rogue tofu. With that being said, in terms of putting high quality case studies on your portfolio, I would put around two to four case studies on your portfolio because one isn't enough to give versatility and options for recruiters or hiring managers that are coming to your portfolio. But then if you put like seven to 10, it's just way too much. It's overwhelming. It's analysis paralysis and they're probably gonna bounce because any type of minor inconvenience or extra time is just not gonna be worth it. All right, next question is, where can I look for good examples of portfolio layouts? I don't know of any like website that just shows a bunch of different portfolio examples. I wish I did. Typically what I've done in the past is just Google UX portfolio examples. And then on top of that, I do have another thing that I do, but I am a little embarrassed to share it with you all. Go on LinkedIn and literally type in the search UX designers and look at random people's profiles and dig and look for their portfolios. I know it is, it's creepy. Honestly, I did it because I was getting tired of looking at all these examples that were of like mega, mega talented UX designers that worked at big tech and it just wasn't relatable or relevant to my circumstance as like a newer UX designer. So that way I got like a good idea of what other UX designers portfolios look like who were kind of having the same background as me, whether or not they took a boot camp or they were self-taught. Next question is, what's one tip to make your portfolio more competitive? Okay, so I have two for this one. The first one is including data. Statistics, in my opinion, helps show 
showcase impact. It really highlights the fact that your designs are results oriented. And on top of that, I feel like it really gives you credibility as a designer. If you can showcase that the decisions that you made helped a product go from A to B or like increase something by X percent, then I think it would really help your portfolio stand out from the rest. However, I know especially for designers with no experience coming from a boot camp, maybe working on projects and putting them on their portfolio that don't really have stakeholders or projects that have the opportunity to show metric. I know this can be really hard. Ugh, this is what happens when you can't open anything with long nails, you gotta... So also how you end up in the hospital. I know for me, since I took a boot camp, I didn't have the ability to showcase things on my case studies that were actual real projects. Instead, they were actually just from the boot camp. But my tip here is to still incorporate metrics in some way or form on your case studies. For example, you could talk about in your project that the goal was to increase sales. And in the future, in order to monitor and track that, you're going to look at conversion rate or what pages users bounce off of or how far they got through the funnel or even talking about time it took for them to get through the booking flow and that you don't want it to exceed a certain time and that being your benchmark. The other tip I have is retrospect. Having a retrospect on your case study will really show humility and it shows that you understand the impacts of your design and you're not just thinking about the present, but you're thinking about the future and the past implications of the decisions that you made. I forgot what I put in here. I don't measure things when I cook, it's just... I'm never gonna do it. When I say retrospect, I have all my case studies, the last section is always kind of like a reflection about things that surprised me, maybe even mistakes that I made and things that I wanna improve on in the future with this project. And I really like seeing these on case studies because it really shows this humble, no ego designer that would make for a really good teammate to work with. And also as a junior UX designer, it shows growth. It shows that you're open-minded to growing and making mistakes and learning from them. And I think that will really help you stand out as well. So so to wrap up this answer since it was really long, basically these two tips that make you stand out, they're looking at the past and the future. It's not just focusing on the present of your case study and the designs today. You're really, really thinking about the holistic view of your product and all the implications that it has. I have one last question and that is how to finish one without losing your mind. I love this question. I lost my mind several times when I was making my first UX portfolio. And honestly, I can't promise that you won't lose your mind, but I do have some tips that I wish I implemented to help me feel a little bit less stressed about the entire situation. The thing that was stopping me from finding peace from my portfolio was honestly me. This is getting really messy. <laughs> when I was making my portfolio, I felt like nothing was ever gonna be enough. That's especially true too, because I'm such a perfectionist. It felt like I wrapped up one day saying, okay, this logo looks great, I'm ready to move on to the next thing. And then that very next morning, I would wake up and I go, I don't like the logo. It doesn't represent who I am. I need to change the whole thing. And it would just add more and more time in between me and getting out there in job interviews. Apparently the trick is to make sure that they don't touch each other. Okay, so I just popped my tofu babies in the air fryer for 10 minutes. So I wish I did the following. I wish I defined success, set hard deadlines, and incorporated breaks into my timeline. All of those things would have helped me stay accountable, especially when I wanted to tweak really unnecessary things. And it also would have protected my creative energy. Defining success from the start before even starting anything on your portfolio is super important. And for me, success for my portfolio was getting a UX design job. So me changing the font from sans serif to serif at like the 11th hour for no super good reason was just another thing blocking me from hitting publish and getting my name out there to recruiters and hiring managers. So I would say my biggest tip too here is just to not overthink it. I know it's easier said than done, but it's going to help you in the long run and help you remain consistent when you're working on your portfolio. So that was the final question. I have so much respect for cooking channels because this is not easy. I'm so sorry if I wasn't able to get to your question, but I'm hoping to do more of these videos in the future. So please stay up to date by following me on my Instagram. And for more portfolio tips, you're gonna wanna watch this video next. Pretty good? Need some salt. Always room for improvement, right?